Hi, I'm Maria Thea Harris of Velosos on social media. Welcome back to Sober 50 Podcast on Soul Organized Style. Grab a cuppa and relax with us. So obviously there was a challenge on at the time, which was so over 50 flat leg. And I was just um, explaining it to my family. And then I think one of them went, oh, is it flat lay? You know, I went, no, flat lay. And that's how it just emerged. That's Sarah of Seriously Sewing on Instagram. She's a long time Sober 50 follower. Sober 50 intersects with all communities. We're a community that is so over ageism. Special shout out to the podcast Patreon contributors because their monthly support of this podcast allows me to provide it to you for free. Can you hear me, Maria? Yes, I can. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so excited to meet you and speak to you. Oh, God, it's like technology. It's always so stressful. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm, I'm all over the shop, but I'm so pleased that you said yes to this recording. Uh, oh, I'm really honoured to be part of it. It's great. It's such a great part of So Over 50. Really appreciate it. I've got two instances that Sandy has asked me to check with you about. Right. It's nothing serious. This is just a bit of history, right? Okay. Yeah. You've been a follower for Sober 50 for quite a number of years now, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. When did you discover Sober 50 on Instagram? I think it was fairly early on when Judith launched it. That's my memory. And it's a community that I just really enjoy communicating with. It's very supportive, fun to be around with all the challenges. And I really agree with its aim to raise the profile of sewers who are over 50 because in general media, we tend to start to become slightly more invisible. It's really important that we do become more visible because we're a a massive demographic now. I just really sign up to what they're doing and uh, really enjoy the sort of communications I have with other people involved with the hashtag. (laughs) The two instances that Sandy asked me to check with you about that you could possibly talk about on the podcast was the Vera hat. The what? The Vera hat, V-E-R-A, the hat. God, I've forgotten about that one. (laughs) Well, Vera obviously is a TV character. She's a detective program on British TV. Again, she's over 50. She's an anti-hero in some ways because she's not glamorous and all the rest of it. And she wears this hilarious hat the whole time, which she sort of pulls down because she's in the Northeast, which, you know, can be a bit blowy and a bit cold and wet. My husband has this hat, which we always tease him about, but obviously keeps him very dry. And so I just use that. That's where that comes from. It's just a joke, really, and not being afraid to be a bit daft, really. And that's kind of the thread of your account on Instagram, isn't it? Yeah. I enjoy humour. And our family, it has a lot of banter in it. You know, if you're a quiet person, don't come to one of our meal times because uh, it's quite a quick fire and everything. So, yeah, I will see the ridiculous in a situation or the funny side of stuff in a situation, especially regarding myself. Maybe I'm a bit self-conscious sometimes in front of the camera. So I look for the humour when I'm doing stuff. And also, you know, I grew up watching comics, uh, Morecambe and Wise. And then later, sort of Victoria Wood, who I absolutely adore, and French and Saunders. And I just really enjoy their type of humour. It's very female. And so, yeah, so it's just what I've, I've always enjoyed. Cast your mind back to 2020. Right. Right. So a lot of things happened worldwide. But one of the funniest things that I saw, which Sandy drew my attention to, was your flat lay video. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously there was a challenge on at the time, which was so over 50 flat lay. And I was just um, explaining it to my family. And then I think one of them went, oh, is it flat lay? You know, I went, no, flat lay. And that's how it just emerged was it was just the play on words, really. And I mean, I can't Irish dance for the life of me, as you can see in the video. But it was just sort of to be entertaining, really, and a bit daft. (laughs) And look, it's still quite entertaining today when people go into your account, which is Sarah C. Sewing. That's right. Yeah, Sarah C. Sewing. So when people go into your Instagram account and scroll back through the years, 
they'll get a really good idea as to what your humour is like and have a good laugh because your (laughs) humour, it's just genuine fun. (laughs) Well, that's very kind of you to say so. I mean, it won't hit with everybody, that's the thing. But, you know, I mean, sometimes it's funny actually that Sandy said to you, oh, take a look at that because occasionally when I'm making videos or taking a daft photo, I do sort of think, I wonder if Sandy will find this funny. Because we have a very similar humour. And when she's done stuff, you know, like she cut out her pockets out of the back of her skirt. And I just find that sort of thing, you know, hilarious because it's the sort of thing I can do as myself. So, yeah, I just enjoy humour. I enjoy that sort of being daft sort of thing and entertaining people, really, and being entertained by others. The Met Gala video that you did where you came yeah. into the house and you were being shouted at as to what you were wearing, who were the paparazzi behind the camera? <laughs> so that was my son and my daughter. My family are very supportive of my um, Instagram life. I'll sort of say to them in the morning, I've got an idea for a post. And they go, all right, okay. But they always get on board and then they add their ideas as well. I mean, you know, all my kids are very into drama and and music and stuff. So they're used to performing. So they understand it. And, you know, they are very supportive of it, which is great. And also come up with lots of ideas themselves for stuff as well. So that's that's really nice. It is. You all work really well together. Yeah, no, it is. It's fun. And and like I say, their input and my husband's input, you know, just rounds it off, really. And also when I'm sort of saying, oh, do you think this will work? Often they will go, oh, yeah, that's good. That's funny. And, you know, particularly my kids, they're very into the whole social media thing, the TikTok and whatever. You know, so they know what's current as well. So they'll sort of say, oh, yeah, that'll hit, that won't. So they're quite good sort of adjudicators on it, really. When you describe them as adjudicators, does this mean that they edit back your ideas? Well, they will just sort of, you know, like with the Met Gala one, Harry just sort of came up with a lot of his commentary. He came up with that. And we just adapted it. You know, videos always take a few takes because, you know, we always slip up somewhere, say the wrong thing. Well, in that video, we kept in where I step on my dress and fall up the stairs and you hear my daughter laughing. So, yeah, it's just a bit of a family affair, really. And they're very comic as well. When did you start your Instagram account? That was 2016. There's a meetup called Sobram in the UK. I went to that and I met lots of lovely sewers there and some of the bright young things sort of said to me, oh, you know, you, you ought to go onto Instagram, you'll love it. Because I was saying I'm a very visual person. And uh, I think it was Kate from Time to Sew sort of explained to me how to set up an account. And so I did and I've never looked back since really. That's good. Sarah, how long have you been sewing for? Is this something that you picked up recently or have you been sewing since you could first hold fabric? Well, it's a bit of a mixture really in that I was always a crafty kid, not in the naughty sense. I mean, you know, I was always doing. I was very lucky in that I went to both an infant and a primary school where they encouraged creativity and we did lots of crafts and stuff like that. And my mum was an exceptionally good dressmaker. She was fabulous. And now that I sew, that's the one thing I really wish I could go back and say to her, you were so good. It was her hobby and I was an impatient learner. So I don't think she enjoyed trying to teach me to uh, sew. So really, my sewing journey started at school. I learned at school in year nine. We were allowed to drop woodwork and metalwork. I chose to do needlework and home economics. And I took that right through to the exam stage. I used to do it with a friend, Tracy. Again, she was a great laugh. We used to have this corner where there was far too much chat and far too much laughter, but it was really enjoyable. So we learned so there. We had a fantastic teacher called Mrs. Schofield. Right, girls, get your sewing out. I have no idea what her accent was, but in my head, that's how she spoke to us. But she was really brilliant. She sometimes sits on my shoulder when I'm sewing because, Mm. you know, we had to do it all properly. We had to tack everything together. And then when I was at university and I used to watch Top of the Pops, which was a pop program in the UK, and I saw Madonna and she was wearing, you know, all these little skirts and crop tops and stuff. But I couldn't buy that sort of stuff then. And Boy George with his stuff. And so 
I would make stuff. And it was that sort of confidence of youth that I would get a sheet from my mum. I said, ask her for an old, you know, bed sheet and I'd get fabric paint and paint it and then use that fabric to make an asymmetric top or whatever, you know, I fancied. And then I stopped sewing in my 20s and my 30s because I was very dedicated to my career and then kids and whatever. And I started watching the sewing bee, like so many people, Great British Sewing Bee was the sort of catalyst. It meant that I discovered blogs and that sort of inspired me. And I'd had to give up my hobby, which was dance. I had to give up dance because of an injury. And so in about 2014, I started sewing. I went to Guthrie and Garney, which is a uh, brick shop in Birmingham. And it was like a memory walking in there, just the smell of all the fabric and, you know, and the light and everything. That was really the start of it. I started with a sorbetto top, which so many people, I think, started with, and a meadow spirit skirt. And that was it. I was off. And what I discovered was that when I sewed when I was younger, I was a skinny little miss, so I could make anything out of the packet. And I had to learn a lot about fitting and, you know, the differences about, you know, my height, my body shape and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> When you were at Trocktails for Sober 50 in Edinburgh, the outfit that you wore, like the top, I had a look back and I thought, yeah, I remember seeing you wearing that. And I thought, that's so simple, but it was so effective. And the fabric that you chose was really suited to the pattern that you had. So I just thought I'd say, I really love what you wore. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I knew the instant that I got a ticket, I knew what I was going to make. And normally yeah. I'm quite indecisive about things. But I just knew, I knew I'd love that fabric and I knew of the style I wanted. That was a really straightforward decision, that one. But I love clothes. I've always loved clothes. I've always loved fashion. I think like a lot of people, when I first started sewing again, before I was sewing, I used to be the queen of this capsule wardrobe. Everything went together and everything. That's how I bought clothes. And when I started sewing, I did that classic thing of, you know, looking at other people's makes and thinking, oh, I love that fabric and I love that pattern. But they weren't actually me. Yep. For example, the Emery dress was really popular at one point. And I made two of them. I was doing a sewing class at the time. And they're probably two of my finest makes. They're, they're spot on on fit and they're beautifully made. But I don't wear fit and flare dresses. I don't feel right in them. So they haven't had a huge amount of wear sort of thing. So over time, I've learned to moderate what I make to, you know, I like to, I don't sew at a huge pace, but I like to make stuff I wear and I wear quite a lot and I want to wear. So sometimes I have to step back when I see a, a fabric with a quite a loud pattern and think, well, actually, will I wear that? I've had to learn that because I can get overexcited like lots of people and buy stuff that I, I won't actually wear. It sounds like you still get excited by what people make, but you've learned how to think that's great. Now, what's going to suit me? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I've certainly learned to do that or to keep those bigger patterns to things that, for example, like pyjamas or smaller things. My me made wardrobe is very much a wearable one. I wear, I wear it a lot. Oh, good. Was there anything that you wanted to mention as part of your podcast? Well, I think for me, as we've touched on being part of So Over 50, and So Over 50 has sort of galvanized me to think about how we can promote women over the age of 45. And for me, for the indie pattern companies, it frustrates me that I don't see enough of us on their social media. For me, it's a no brainer in terms of their marketing, just to repost on their stories, pictures of us, our makes in their patterns. So I've written to a number of them to sort of say, you know, why don't you include more people over the age of 45 on your social media? And some of them, to their credit, have replied and then did post for a few days and then they've gone back. Mm -hmm. And I just sort of feel that if we can all be galvanized to do more in that respect. So I've made a choice not to name some of the companies on my Instagram yep. because I just feel, well, you're not willing to promote us and we're a huge market. 
that's the thing which So Over 50 has proved and all the events have proved. For me, Instagram and So Over 50 is a great community. I love all the interaction with people, but also I think it galvanizes us to be a bit more political, which is good, and get a bit more profile. The good thing with So Over 50, and I have to be honest is that I'm one of the social media editors and the reason I do it on a voluntary basis is because it is a positive environment that is helping to galvanize sewers who are over 45 of all walks of life to make sure that we're visible and for people who don't know about the Sew 50 Instagram account go on there and have a look at the posts and you'll see how much engagement is happening on every sure. single post and how much visibility there is of many of the followers. And there's 49,000 followers now. So that's a huge bunch of people that so. Yeah, it's a massive, massive market. And that's what frustrates me sometimes with some of the pattern companies, that they're not realising that, that it is a massive market. And, and one with financial clout as well. But yeah, it's a great community. I really love it. I love talking to people and interacting with them. Um, and getting ideas from them yeah and the challenges bring people together and you know you were also at a party up in Scotland yeah and it was such a mixture of people and that's what's so great about the so over 50 community it's very inspiring and very supportive as well and that's what I really enjoy about it I get loads of ideas but I also get you know kind of support and feedback which is really nice in case people don't know, at the Edinburgh Fox House in 2022, it had a huge range of people from all walks of life and also from all age ranges. So it wasn't just people over 45 that were there. We had quite a big group and a varied group and it was fun. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's, it's a really supportive community. You know, we are a big community and we love to sew and we're happy to share our makes and we want to see people of our ages more on the grids. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, definitely. It is a really good community. It's very supportive. You can have a really good laugh on it. You know, that's very much my approach to life anyway, is humour, as you might be able to see from my grid. But yeah, it's also very informative as well. You can ask questions and get support and information from people. It's a good sharing forum and it's safe to share as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, I think it's really important. I've said it on various of the challenges that, you know, we are all shapes, sizes, heights, <laughs> you and I being on the smaller side of, um, <laughs> of that uh, debate. And it's great to see patterns on people so that you can make a choice about what you're going to make. Yeah. I love the Instagram community. I spend far too much time on it. What can I say? It keeps us connected. <laughs> So, Sarah, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and making sure that your sewing and your Instagram account gives people joy and a bit of fun and a bit of a giggle. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm glad if it does. That's a, a big aim of mine. Thank you also to your whole family for getting involved too. That, it's, that sounds like a very supportive environment with lots of laughs. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's very much a part of our family is to find the humour. And also, you know, technically, I'm not very technically very good sort of thing. So it's useful to have young people there to go, oh, yeah, just do this, mum, you know. We're still keeping in touch with everyone, not just the people over 45. And that's why Instagram's been really good for us. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I'm very visual. I like visual sort of um, yeah. stuff. It's very easy to access. And um, so, yeah, it's just a great community and I really enjoy it. Thank you so much, Sarah, for coming onto the podcast and for supporting Sober 50. That's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. It's lovely to speak to you. Thank you. This episode of Sober 50 podcast on Soul Organized Style was produced by me, Maria Thea Harris, with permission of Sarah sound by bensound.com many thanks for the ongoing support of the podcast patreon contributors their ongoing support enables me to develop this podcast for free make sure you direct message sandy at sober 50 on instagram to contribute to the ongoing posts and challenges the team promotes to the community of over forty nine thousand followers you can subscribe to so organized style podcast but with an s not a z on all good podcast apps make sure you go back and listen to our free 
Sober 50 podcast archive on Soul Organized Style. We look forward to joining you in your sewing room next time. Stay safe, everyone.